Welcome everybody to the Pirate Skills Meetup, this time all about A-B testing, where we have something new and shiny baked up for you to make better data-driven decisions. We've got the A-B testing blueprint. This is a complete mirror board that you can copy free of charge if you go to piratesgoods.com slash A-B testing. And let me just show you around a little bit. You see this big board at the top where you can track your own A-B tests. I give you a short introduction into how to set up your A-B testing with some recommended videos and tutorials to watch. You can um, get my best insights from how to develop strong A-B testing ideas like creating a customer journey map, which tools inspire me for good ideas and the frameworks I'm using or that I can highly recommend to use to you um, as well. And if you want to really go deep, I have a lot of learning resources on the A-B testing blueprint this time. So you can go as deep as you like into this rabbit hole down to calculating your sample size and your statistical significance if you're into that kind of stuff, because I happen to be into that. So you can get all of that at piratesgoods.com slash A-B testing for free as always. And I really hope you enjoyed. I'm looking forward to your feedback and how we can still improve it. What do we want to achieve here actually? So A-B testing is uh, one of the uh, methods we use when we try to optimize conversions. So we have our users yeah, that experience our product. They see our ads, they go to our landing pages, they subscribe to our free trial, add something to the shopping cart, they check out, they stay, they leave, they recommend people. So that is the customer journey. And the general idea is to, to improve the user flow. Yeah, if the user flow gets better, smoother, then we have, a, we have optimized our conversions. But the, the general thinking, especially from the marketing point of view, because user flow is also heavily involved in the product point of view, but in marketing, we're interested in two things. The first thing that comes to mind is cost per acquisition our customer acquisition costs. And this is probably the thing that most people focus on when they try to optimize conversions, when they use A-B testing. They want to drive the cost for an email subscriber, for a customer, for a free trial, as low as possible. Very understandable, yeah? But there is a different uh, point of view as well. The increase of the customer lifetime value or CLV. Customer lifetime value means how much profit can you make from each customer during their lifetime and let's say three months six months 12 months complete lifetime because the the magic moment is when when this happens when your cost per acquisition is lower than the customer lifetime value yeah when you spend less than you earn then you are ready to scale then you can give it your all and sometimes it's just tweaking a little bit here in the onboarding funnel so your cost per acquisition is lower and then improving your pricing, improving the retention in the product so your customer lifetime value goes up. And once you hit that magic moment, yeah, you're so ready to scale and A-B testing and conversion optimization, that is what is going to answer the question, how to do that? And we have a pretty simple framework at Pirate Skills for this. We, we set a very clear conversion goal. We call it our North Star metric. Let's just call it, we want to get leads cheaper than two euro 50 for our lead magnets on a specific landing page. Then we can generate a lot of ideas. Uh, first, how we can get to the two euro 50. Let's say we start at, at five euros and we to cut that in half. Not all ideas are created equal. So we have to prioritize. We have to experiment. We have to make sure that we are not just doing random changes, but we have to make a little scientific experiment out of that without overdoing it to stay practical. And then we have to check and analyze the results and hopefully they generate more great ideas. Yeah, that is what uh, the simple process is like and what is gonna keep on happening week over week over week or whatever your sprint cycle is. Yeah, you want to improve your ideas, adjust your goals, prioritize them, execute them in the form of experiments, learn from the results and keep repeating it. So not that difficult. So let's look at one of my most beautiful landing pages I've ever built. As you can obviously see, plan the meal. 
is uh, this was an app validation landing page where we had the goal to improve the double opt-in conversion rate of this website. So we wanted to um, validate our ideas and we had the rule, no line of code before we do not have a thousand people who double opted into our email list of MailChimp. And I had some marketing budget to, the, to do that upfront, but it usually was not more than 1,000 euros. So we had to be really strict uh, to get that done. So I built landing pages that briefly explain the value proposition. And I created ads, for example, on Google and Facebook um, that would tell people about the idea and ask them to sign up if they're interested. And this is not the whole landing page. It goes even it gets even better. You can scroll down. And then you can see three features or benefits that this, this mobile app is trying to give the customer. Yeah, and it asks them to call uh, to action again. And if you look down here, not even the picture is really mine. It's something that I took off Flickr and attributed the artist as I should. So it's, you see, it's a very simple landing page. And now you ask yourself, uh, what would you believe? What is the conversion rate? of this landing page. We are sending cold traffic from Google Ads to it. And now we ask people to sign up and they need to do a double opt-in and go to, to a landing page that says thank you. Yeah. How, what's the percentage of people? Out of 100 people, how many are going to sign up? What do you think? Is it 1%, 5%, 10% or even more? Yeah, let's, let's check that out. And conversion optimization and A-B testing played a very big role in this. At every stage of this landing page, of which we, uh, I built like two a week, we built 150 of those landing page over two years. And then we developed out of the best ideas, just six mobile apps in this time frame. So it was pretty, pretty high stakes for us uh, because we needed very expensive developer time once we made the decision. So. We did everything we could to, to to track the shit out of our customers. Of course, all after they beautifully consented, primarily with Google Analytics. And Google Analytics is going to play a big role today because it is the foundation of which we built our A/B testing tool stack. Yeah, the Google Optimize tool stack. You can use other tools for free, but Google Analytics is a very good, solid choice at almost every stage of your business. So here you can see how many people landed on the website, how many people converted. The, the orange line is always the people who converted. The blue line is everybody. And, and we can learn a lot from them and optimize our landing page based on what we see. For example, in this graph, we see that the, the audience on the right hand side are the converting ones. 25 to 44 is the core. And it is obviously females who are most interested in this kind of app in this case and we did not do any gender adjustment on the ad level yet and so we learned that and now we can customize the landing page towards females between uh, 25 and 44 and maybe make a decision to 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 focus on that segment a different choice could have been just as well to say there are enough men who are interested how about we focus on them and build a kind of app for those people then we, we learned a lot about the, about the interest groups in Google Analytics. So if you, if you track people through Google Analytics and set it up right, you can see the little categories and packages that people put them into. For example, there is a pretty obvious one that is called cook, uh, Cooking Enthusiast Inspiring Chefs. But what wasn't maybe that obvious was the health and fitness buffs. So we could have focused our direction towards one of those two uh, audiences. Yeah, and of course, here at this point, uh, I would suggest it's the aspiring chefs. It's just, it's, it's for inspiration and that then informs my ideas for a B test. Oh yeah, we could do something in the fitness direction. Maybe that works even better than the normal recipe stuff. And, and I can test that. Then there is another very interesting category, the home and gardening. Like after you think about it, Okay, maybe then it's obvious, but before that it was not, at least not to me, that people who are interested in home and gardening are also interested in cooking. So why is that important? It might be cheaper to target people in home and gardening than in cooking and convert them from there. Yeah, or the other way around. Yeah, it doesn't matter which direction. Yeah, you can learn it from all, all sides. 
we also did display ads. Those are banner ads on other people's websites. And we saw very different results here. And it's already a little sneak peek at the conversion rate that we are getting. You can see here, for example, that from this website called livestrong.com, most people came to our website when we did display ads. 2000 uh, sessions were started. Um, 299 emails were collected. So we had a conversion rate from this website of 12%, 12.8%. But there is an even better one. Now we can go and pick and choose and already start at the ad level to do A-B testing. Yeah, not, not just on, on our landing page, what most people think about and what we are going to focus on today. But you can see that this these guys, Authority Nutrition, they are even insaner. They only sent 225 people because I didn't focus on them, but they stayed 50% longer on this website, 18.67% converted into 42 double opt-ins. Absolutely amazing. So this could be a partner for the future that we want to develop, or I can look at the language that he's using, that the developer owner is using, the website owner is using, and, and learn from that and implement that in my mobile app if I want to go into that direction. So already you can see that conversion rates are extremely different. Um, you can't just say like, oh yeah, I have a conversion rate of 10%. No, no, no. From which traffic source? From which campaign in that traffic source? Which version of your website did they see? How did they end there? Were they on desktop? Were they on mobile? So I, I try to learn as much as possible to get the new ideas for stronger A-B test variants. And then of course, we look at the ads people are looking at and at the targeting. So in this case, we had the same ad to two different audiences. And in one case, we had a click-through rate of 16%, in one case of 8%. Guess which direction we went? We went with the audiences that had a 16% click-through rate. And then this is the, the finale. Uh, we optimized the conversion rate of this over a time frame of uh, six weeks. We started at around 5%, then we ended here up around uh, 10, we hit 20 and at the end, we got a consistent 25% double opt-in conversion rate. Uh, and you see that the average is 15.28. Yeah, but it actually counts what is the average at the end after you did all of the conversion optimizations. What did we do? We optimized the ad copy. We optimized the targeting in the ad. We optimized the landing page experience, the page speed, what they saw, what the value proposition was, what the call to action was, what the three benefits were, the way they double opted into our mailing list was optimized. So every little bit adds 1% here, 1% there, 1% there. And you can start with 5% and grow to 25%, as you can see with this example. And there was no incentive involved into this. Yes, you can have higher opt-in rates, uh, if you give them, for example, a free goodie. Yeah, but we consciously did not want to give them any goodies because we wanted to compare those ideas equally and we cannot always make a goodie with a similar value. So don't worry if you're below or if you're higher. It's not about where you currently are. It's about getting better from where you currently are, from shifting from your awesome opt-in rate of 20% to 30% or shifting from 3% to 6%. Yeah, that is that is a huge change in your business of what you can do. A shift from 3% to 6%, if that correlates with your revenue, you just double your revenue. Yeah, just uh, every point in the customer journey can help you. And, and we used all of the points and we got big results. And I hope you can do too. So that's why we built this um, A-B testing blueprint. So you have a, a nice overview of how to uh, keep track of your different experiments, how to generate stronger ideas and how to actually set up the whole thing. You can grab this at piratesguilds.com slash A-B testing for free. If you are already part of the Pirate Skills community, you just need to log in and press on the button and you're immediately enrolled and you can get the video and the slides and the uh, the mirror board 
Um, and if you're not yet part of the community, feel free to join us. I, it's just like a name and an email address that we need and your password for future logins. Yeah, no more strings attached. Uh, all right, so let's dive into that. Let me just open the board and, and show you around. So this is how the mirror board looks when you start. It usually end up in this kind of a view. I'm, I'm supposing that you're using it on, on desktop for now. Um, and what you can do is because you cannot edit this board immediately, you can just copy it. Okay, if you press on this button up here uh, on the title, it will say duplicate. And if you do not have a free Miro account yet, then you can just sign up to duplicate. And so it's uh, it's the best way to go for it if you want to make it completely your own. And I highly encourage it. You don't need to keep the pirate skill style, make it your thing. What I usually do is I, I switch to the blue arrow key and then copy everything and start working in a version. So I always keep the original and I have put in some examples here. Uh, for example, uh, here some some A/B A B test ideas, some status, some yeah, some landing page examples, some scoring that we're gonna talk about in a minute, um, and and how I would track the baseline, the hypothesis, the control, the variant, the change. Yeah, we're gonna get into all of this mad stuff at the end. But first of all, I would like us to talk about how to set up your A/B testing. So I do not want to go into the nitty gritty of actually how to implement this on your website because you might be on Squarespace, you might be on, on WordPress, you might have your own stack. What you need to know are the following five steps. And just keep that simple. You need to have Google Analytics installed. The tool that I would highly recommend you use for A-B testing is Google Optimize. It's free, it's limited to a couple of A-B tests, but uh, it is very well integrated into the tracking tool stack that we recommend with Google Tag Manager, Google Analytics, all of your goals, your event tracking. And you can see all of those in Google Optimize right out of the box if you have built this on top of Google Analytics. Of course, if you're using something else like AB Tasty, like Chameleon, like Matomo AB testing, they are all great. Keep using them. It's not about the tool, it's about understanding that you should be doing A-B testing because it can definitely increase your customer lifetime value and lower your cost per acquisition, making this moment of scalability closer and closer um, in your business. So after you have installed Google Analytics, you have to set up some conversion goals. There is no sense in doing any kind of A-B testing if you are not having a very clear goal to which you wanna drive. In the example that I gave you before, I wanted to increase uh, the number of people that opted into on this landing page, yeah, to, to my MailChimp sign up. Well, this might be by conversion goal. So I need to be able to track that. So I set it up as a conversion goal in Google Analytics. I've done a couple of videos about it. One is already linked here. And you can just start this video here or open it up on YouTube. I also gave you the link to the, the best explanation yeah, uh, of how to set up your Google Analytics that I found uh, from the source itself, yeah, from Google. And after you have set up that, you install Google Optimize. It's very similar to the installation of Google Analytics. Um, <clears throat> if you can install Google Analytics, you are 100% sure that you're able to uh, install Google Optimize as well. And Google Optimize is always my first choice when I want to work on the website that I currently have. If I have very specific, specific landing pages like post-click optimized landing page on a tool like Instapage, I, I use the A-B testing on that kind of tool or Unbounce. But if I want to A-B test on my own website or my, um, my software as a service, then, then I use Google Optimize because it just blends itself in beautifully into your current setup. And then you need to configure it. All of this is explained in this video and in this article. Yeah, and then you just create your first A-B test and you're up and running, you're ready to go. So now we have our uh, setup nicely done. 
Now the thing becomes, what am I going to put in all of those lines? What are my actual improvement ideas here? And to generate strong ideas, I have a couple of great resources set up for you. The most fundamental idea that, that you really need to understand is that A-B testing and conversion optimization is about getting more people through your customer journey. And what I do for myself and what I do with every team I work with, if I do conversion optimization with them, I create a map of every step people need to take. There is a very popular framework out there called the R metrics that I really like by Dave McLaurin. And it starts with acquisition, activation, retentional, referral, revenue. You need to acquire your customers. It starts with advertising, with SEO. It's, it is with a landing page experience, with a site speed. Then activation means getting the first commitment and getting first value as a customer. And that usually means signing up for something, committing to an app install, committing to giving my name and email address, subscribing to a newsletter, starting a free trial, putting something into the checkout yeah, in my e-commerce shop. That is activation. And this is the next step we need to optimize. Then we need to keep people in the customer journey that they finish the first session they started successfully and leave some revenue there, but also that they keep on coming back and returning. And ideally, if they're happy, then they give us some referrals. They send more people over uh, to our website because they say, man, this is awesome. This A-B testing blueprint thing. You need to hear about it. Go to pirateskits.com slash A-B testing. Check it out. That is a referral. Really appreciate that if you would be sharing this whole enchilada, if you like this. And then, of course, we want to optimize the, the part that makes money, the e-commerce checkout. So many online shops have horribly mobile optimized e-commerce checkouts. Yeah, they look kind of okay on desktop, but then on mobile, they just break down. Um, or you have a form field with 12 form fields and just people want to become customers, but it's so hard to become customers, yeah? to become a customer. That, that is optimizing revenue. And a simplified version of that is what I want you to do is to have this R metrics framework in your head and now to write down every single screen or page a customer has to go through. In this super simple example, people click on a Facebook ad, they end on a landing page, they join an email series, and they buy something. Yeah, that is very simple. But what I would like you to do is to really ideally take screenshots and write the URL of each website. So you become hyper aware of what you make your customers go through. We optimized the pirateskits.com website because it, it took every customer three steps to get any of those um, lead magnets that we built, like the A-B testing blueprint, like the growth marketing index, like the content journey map. But now it only takes one step yeah, because we thought about it. Oh my God, how bad is this that people actually have to go through this? And uh, we hope the experience has improved greatly for you. And the tests are still running to see is it actually better than before? But it's highly likely. You can then use reporting tools or, or just Google spreadsheet that tells you, okay, people had this experience. In this example down here, 100,000 people visit my online store. 20,000 put some uh, look at some products. That's the product view page. So I, I only convert 19% to this next step. So maybe that is one of the biggest bottlenecks I should be solving. But let's keep looking. Once they are on the product page, they now need to add something to the cart. Only 35% of those people left over managed to do that. And then only 1,000 people start the checkout. Yeah, and then we have sessions with transactions. And not every time they need to go through the checkout, they can go directly from the add to cart to the payment for example, through PayPal Express. And okay, so we got a conversion rate from add to card um, to transactions of roughly like a third of people were converting. Uh, that is what I typically see. So I can, I can see the bottlenecks. I see where people are dropping off and where they shouldn't. Yes, I'm losing uh, 
uh, only converting a third of people who added to cart, but that is very standard in the industry. What is not pretty standard is that I convert only 20% of people from my landing page views to look at a product. Yeah, and that very much depends on your website experience, uh, but that is something I might want to improve through A-B testing. And now ideas pop up. How can I get more people to my product page? I'm thinking about, uh, I'm, and then I'm gonna check out, okay, where do those people are actually landing on? Are they landing on my blog? Maybe I should put in, in between the articles recommended product that highly align with the, uh, with the content of the blog. Maybe I should have a recommended product section at the bottom or on the site. Maybe I can have an evil pop-up show up for certain customers on certain blog pages that convert them to my product websites. I can come up with all of those ideas and then I can put them up here and start ranking them. We're getting to that in, in a second. But first of all, I want to be very clear about my customer journey in terms of the, the structure that people go through. And then I want to become very clear about the data. Where are people actually dropping off where you think they should not? First step. Yeah, and this is informing me 80% of the time. But if we want more inspiration, we have help. There are lots of tools willing to help us here. And here are some of my favorites. So of course you have Google Analytics. The report you just saw on the lower left was from Google Analytics. Go grab that, install it. It's already required. Look at the number of pages you have under the section behavior, content, or pages. Yeah, and there you see which pages are the most frequently visited. They are also the ones that are probably most uh, the best customers for optimization. Because if you are optimizing a site that is really hidden somewhere for that just five people visit a week, there is no sense in optimizing that. You want to optimize the, the websites that have the most traffic and especially among those, the ones that are the most important landing pages. You can also see that in Google Analytics under um, behavior, content, and then Web, uh, landing pages, uh, you get that. So then the next tool I really like is called Hotjar. By the way, I, I just put links in here. So if you press the little icon, you can see the landing page of the tool. No affiliations here, no affiliate links, just the tools I believe in. And, and here you can see what Hotjar is doing for you. My favorite feature is screen recording and, and heat maps is like my second favorite. This is the heat map is where you see where people are clicking and the recording that's like the, the magic thing is um, a virtual recording of the session of where people actually move their mouse. And it's like watching over their shoulder. All of the private data is usually hidden, but there you can see what people are actually doing on the page, what seems to confuse them, how they, for example, interact with a pop-up that shows up on your website. And, and, and this, is, this is so key to, to, to regularly check hot jar recording sessions, yeah, if you want to improve that. Absolutely beautiful piece of inspiration. Then a completely different direction goes again, I, I really like very different angles to look at when I do A-B testing and conversion optimization. Next one is GT Metrics. GT Metrics is my favorite tool to analyze site speed. For example, um, you can throw on a website here, fireskills.com slash workshops, or I have them here in the drop down menu, and it's, it's, it's being scored. Yeah, and it's being scored by how fast is it loading? One of the indicators I'm looking at is how long does it take until the website is interactive and people can actually engage with it. And it takes um, 667 milliseconds, which is below one second and which is usually the goal I want to go for for piratesguild.com. For e-commerce store, it is said that every second above um, three second load time, you have lost 30% of your revenue. Especially in e-commerce, you should be highly sensitive on how fast your website is loading. Anything below two seconds, I believe, is currently pretty acceptable. But if you are having a product that needs to work in areas where your customers do not have a very strong internet connection, that becomes slower and slower and slower. 
and you can simulate that. You can see, for example, what are the biggest elements on your website and, and how is the website loading in this case? So I can search for, do I have any big pictures or JavaScript code that is not needed anymore on this website that I can kick off? And this really helps me to optimize the, the speed of the website. And that again is a very worthy A-B test. Then the next category, and they are all in this category, is actually asking your user. I, re I remember when I built the, the piratesgoods.com slash workshops landing page with Mati, um, we went to 50 people and asked them messages. We just built this new landing page. Can you please just hit us with everything that you do not like about it? Yeah. Um, and we got feedback on, on, on the header, on, on all of the different parts, the video, the descriptions, the pricing. This was the most uh, argued about case. Oh, should you put pricing on your pages? How should you frame the coaching price? This is not clear, that is not clear. What should be in the call to action area at the top? And uh, keep, keep this landing page in mind when we talk about the, the, the examples in a second, yeah? And this landing page, yeah, it took a lot of time to, it took just a day to create because we have a good landing page tool with WordPress and Oxygen. But then we, we took time to listen to the people and, and to decide what do we want to hear from them. And you can do that, for example, through a type form, um, user survey. Also, Hotjar gives you the ability to have on-page pop-ups that ask people how they like that specific landing page to collect NPS scores and stuff like that. But type form service and actually writing with people is very helpful. Another tool that has actually focused on that is Qualaroo. So if you have um, a software as a service, a web app, uh, then this is also highly recommended. This has been created originally by Sean Ellis, the founder of growthhacker.com. I'm a big fanboy. Um, but he sold this company. It's still an amazing tool. And then there is usertesting.com. You can get user tests here from any kind of audience you can imagine. And they're going to try your product and also, of course, your, your website. And they're going to tell you this is good, this is bad. And it, it closes what they say. They, they, it closes the empathy gap because a website is this anonymous place where people act and those tools I have shown you give you give you the empathy of what is actually happening. The screen recording I love the most from an observation point of view. Tools like user testing and asking people uh, through forums or just through interviews, that is the highest quality of personal empathetic feedback. And that generates so many captain obvious ideas but also some highlights that you did not expect. And then you just need to put them on a list up here, prioritize them, and then get them into testing. All right, but it's not just the tools that help us. It's also ways to think. And I, I put up three frameworks that I really like uh, that help me to think about A-B testing. So the first one is called uh, the LIFT model. Yeah, by the guys from Wider, uh, Wider Funnel. And the, the lift model has, I, I like models that think from the two sides. Like in the beginning, I mentioned you can decrease the cost per acquisition and increase the customer lifetime value. Similar thinking is happening here. So a user wants to, something from you on a website. He's, he's motivated, but he's going to be distracted from like your navigation, from pop-ups. They might develop anxiety because the pricing or the offer is not clear or what happens afterwards. And this is going to decrease the motivation, but you can, you can fix those factors. Yeah. And be clear and, and try to avoid any distraction on this, uh, on your landing pages, for example. And on the other hand, you can increase the motivation to go to the next step by being very clear and, and making the relevance, the, the problem solving of your product, of your lead magnet, absolutely clear. Increase the urgency, 
So going from, from those different angles here, this article and this model by Chris Gowood, highly recommended. Then um, this is a pretty good guide to get into the whole mindset of A-B testing from uh, VWO. Um, also one of the popular A-B testing tools, yeah, like VWO, Optimizely, A-B Tasty, Google uh, Optimize. Yeah, those are some of the biggest player, but there are many, many, many more. Uh, and feel free, please, to keep the one that you already have. Um, I don't want to recommend one tool too much. I just think that the Google Optimize is the most realistic for most people. And they have a simple process of starting with research and ending with research. It's like researching, observing, formulating a hypothesis, A-B testing, deploying the winning version, researching again and keeping that, that running. And there is one that is focused on, on the e-commerce perspective. E-commerce is a bit different than the normal software as a service or B2B lead generation. There are very specific steps to be taken there. And there's a great guy, guide by, by Shopify.com who are very open with their conversion data. So if you're looking for e-commerce conversion data, what is normal? Yeah, how many people check out after they put something to the shopping cart? Look at sources from Shopify. They, they have hundreds of thousands of online shops and the aggregated data and regularly publish studies with current models. And the model I liked here for A-B testing was the fact-act model. Find a good goal, analyze or, or find something that is an issue, analyze it, create a test, test it, analyze the test, combine it with the original version and then tell the people yeah, in your um, in your team about it because this everything that you optimize is probably also a problem on a different part of your website. Maybe you fix it on that one landing page, but you have not fixed it everywhere. So these are the frameworks I'm using to to get my my brain going and to 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 really um, get the ideas that are strong. The A-B testing alone is, is, is meaningless if you're not having worthy contestants in your A-B test. Uh, I always imagine it like this. I like to play chess, but I don't play as good as Magnus Carlsen or Gary Kasparov because when they have a strategy in mind and they have a goal, it might take them only three steps yeah, on the board to achieve that goal, but I need seven. And that is the same idea with A-B testing. Um, you can do all the A-B testing you want. If the, the challenger that you put into the ring that is going to compete to what you currently have, if that's not a big step forward, you, are, you don't have a chance to make progress. Yeah? And the more bold you are in making changes and the better your predictions are for the improvement and the better your prioritization is, the less time, the less steps you need to get where you want to go. All right. And the last part on the lower right is just resources. If you want to really learn and see how deep that rabbit hole of A-B testing goes, I have set a number of articles that I suggest kind of in order with increasing difficulty. Uh, not, not all of them. This is not all, always true, but I would start at the left-hand side and then work towards the, the right-hand side if you want to go in there. And then I have also, because this will sooner or later come up, people will want to ask like, yeah, but is it statistically significant or not? Here, um, do I have enough traffic on my website? Here are the calculators I use if I want to answer those kinds of questions. So in my psychology studies, I happen to be, yeah, taking like two years of statistics where we actually needed to learn how to calculate that like with formulas, but thankfully there are calculators for that. Uh, that help you to calculate how big the sample size needs to be, how to decide what kind of level of significance you need for your test to be sure that you did not have any false positives in your tests. Yeah, and those are just my favorite tools. Check them out, use the ones that feel most comfortable to you. Here are my favorite videos from the Pirate Skills recording of the last two years on, on how to get more traffic yeah, solve that problem. That is more important than A-B testing. It's definitely more important to get more traffic. 
on your website, but quality traffic that converts and then optimize. So get some inspiration there. All right. Now we look back at what we have here. I hope that already gave you a little bit of um, a head start of, first of all, setting it up, then generating strong ideas and a way to educate yourself to become a better A-B tester, better player at this game. But how does it actually now work? How do we go to a website like this piratesgoods.com slash workshops and, and create meaningful experiments to increase the conversions? So the first start is, what do I want to optimize for? What is it? Is it the click on this button? That is the first meaningful engagement people can do. Is it scrolling down and playing, playing the video? Uh, is it checking out the content? Is it checking out the pricing and not being checked out by uh, shocked by it? Or is it, and this is what I think it is, is it actually getting in touch with me? Or at least downloading the overview. If you press that, let me open that in the new window. You, you get a PDF where you see something and that is a meaningful commitment to do. Or they can write me an email this way. But I could do this completely differently. Why don't I do scheduling? Why don't I ask people to schedule a call to me instead of writing old school emails yeah, and, and making an even bigger commitment? Let's write that idea down. So let's write this idea down. And you can, yeah, you have this big chart at the top that you can use for your own test. I just put in three lines to give you some example material, what the way I would write it down. Because when I left it blank, I was like, ah, are people gonna understand that probably uh, not the first time or with little experience, but let's put in our hypothesis of putting a Calendly scheduling tool in there. Use Calendly, Calendly scheduling, scheduling instead of the email call to action. Yeah? And then let's, let's see how would we judge this idea. Uh, by the way, those cards on Miro are really helpful because you can add additional information if you open the card. You can put in links to the websites there. You can assign people to it, tag it, colorize it as you like um, to differentiate between maybe already pretty well thought out ideas and just ideas that you threw in there. Uh, and I really invite you to throw in ideas and then become more specific later. So the first thing we need to know is what's the status of, of this A-B test? Is it already completed? Is it started or is it not started? Feel free to change that, but I usually have those three states. Then where does this A-B test take place? Here I have a link to the landing page. You have a link to the home page. You have a link to the registration page. Yeah, whatever you, you want to make it easy for your team to understand where this test is actually happening. And, Make it easy for yourself because, because you need this URL all the time. If you have a mobile app, name your screen and yeah, name the state of your screen in which the user is in at the moment. You can put in screenshots here if you don't like just links. And now let's come to the first very important part that is not obvious, is scoring how important this idea is. And I use uh, Sean Ellis's model of impact confidence ease or the ice model impact means in terms of the conversion rate we want people to to talk to us and and to ask about the workshops by either scheduling a call or sending an email how big is the impact of this change if it works yeah will it even affect my my business in terms of revenue or conversion rate then i would say on a scale from 0 to 10 maybe this is a 7 then the confidence, how sure am I that this is going to work? Like, oh, let's, let's give it an eight. I'm pretty sure that scheduling is better than emails. And then how easy is it to implement on a scale from zero to 10? Ease is, it, it's a 10 if it just takes you a, a half an hour to implement. And it's a one, if you maybe need to build a mobile app for it to work. Yeah, but 
Calendly is kind of in the middle. I need to set up my account. I need to change the call to action. I need to um, make sure that there are three slots in my calendar. Let's give it a five. And that uh, gives it the I score. Yeah, I, I prefer to sum it up because it's easier for my brain. Otherwise, if you if you have a spreadsheet, you can use the average, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I usually think in, I can get 30 points. And my good ideas, I usually have more than 20 points and the last good ones have less than 20 points. So we got a 20 point ideas, great. Now, what is actually the metric we want to increase here? Is it revenue or is it the conversion rate of people who get in touch with me? Here I decided revenue, but let's change that. So you can see how, how we can write in here. So now this is the, um, let's call it appointments per, um, per session, percent rate. And I would guess that at the moment, the current baseline, I would say 2% of people who visit the, uh, who visit the page is, uh, is getting in touch. Yeah, maybe, maybe more. Yeah? Then the hypothesis, if I do that change, what do I expect to see? And that is very key about A-B testing and conversion rate optimization uh, in general. Don't just change something into the blue. Have an expectation of the outcome because then testing becomes very clear when to start it, when to end it, uh, how many people you need in there. Let's say we want to increase the conversion rate by 50%, yeah, up to 3%. Yeah, no. so 1% absolute in this case is 50% relative. Then let's scroll over and now we run the test. Yeah, this is all the information I have before I run the test. Now I actually run it. Now I, I've run it for two weeks. I have uh, a thousand sessions run through uh, both versions. The control version is the one just the way it is right now with the email button. Yeah, and now I write down uh, the, the, the current value. Maybe it's 2.2%. This was my baseline before the test, but maybe things changed to 2.2%. Uh, but my, my variation now shows up as 3.4%. And now I got an improvement. Let's say it's 3.3%. This is a change of exactly 50%. This is amazing. Yeah, if this relates to, uh, correlates to revenue, which I have to check, this is a very big success. Just one percent. It is one percent from the from the baseline of two percent, which is absolutely huge. This is a success, but it might not be. It could be like this scenario here, where we we expect we had a baseline of ten. We wanted to increase it to fifteen, but the control was only at ten, and the variation was barely better. It's just an eight eight percent change. The result is very unclear, and I, I note that as well. Noting down your, your failures and the unclear ones are just as valuable as, as, the, as the successful results. So be honest, and even if a test fails, and, and this will happen, yeah? Let's, this, this test was an example where we wanted to change something in the registration page. Let's say uh, the, the sales team told us yeah, what, what we are missing is the phone number. Yeah, so we add the phone number, add phone number to registra registration. To registration form. All right, we got that now. Now, um, I just put in the state. Let's just assume we have done that. We've completed it. And we have decided where this happens. It's this registration page. Let's. Just take a quick look at it, piratesgoods.com slash registration. Oh, it doesn't work, Work. it's a register, actually. Let's head over there. Of course, I'm, I'm logged in here and we have to look at it through our editor. By the way, I'm using WordPress and Optimize. They work really nicely together with Google Optimize. Um, I mean, I use WordPress plus Oxygen Builder and they work great with Google Optimize. So let's just take a little look. 
it's it's just a registration page with very simple um, simple sign up form which has first name, uh, email address, and password, and the consent towards educational uh, newsletter emails and privacy policy in terms of service. Yeah, so very, very simple. Now let's add uh, a phone number to it. And now what do we think? What is the impact? What what do we want actually out of this experiment? We want to we could decide that the registrations per visitors is, is our metric that we measure, or we go towards what the salespeople want, that they have a higher conversion rate of the lead that they actually trying to close. So you can decide, like, do you want to um, observe that from the perspective of how many people am I going to lose if I add the phone number? And let's keep that for, for the moment. So what do I think in terms of registration? Does it, does it improve the conversion rate? I don't believe that. I'm not very confident, but it's easy to implement. So the baseline, the current registration rate would be five. I, I might have an expectation of it going to 6%, yeah, because I'm a bit crazy. But now in my experiment, in the control, only 5% of people converted, but in the variation with the phone number, 4% converted. Now I'm losing 20% of my registrations. Now I know that this is a failure from the perspective of the user flow, but it might be a success from the perspective of the sales team. And you need to make that executive decision and see at the end, where do you lower your cost per acquisition? Where do you increase your customer lifetime value? If you do those kinds of meaningful tests, just based on feeling, you're going to have a hard time. Based on feeling, you get good ideas. Based on this logic and testing, you can validate those feelings and become better at sensing what is actually improving or making things worse. I cannot tell you how many website redesigns I've seen where afterwards the site looked beautiful it did not convert anymore as well as the ugly one. It's, it's even a joke on the web that ugly converts. Right? If, if you look at landing pages from one of the most popular uh, conversion um, building tool, um, funnel building tool called, called ClickFunnels, you're gonna be like, are they, are, they, are they serious? Like this, this is your, your, your landing page? Yeah, and I mean, by now it even looks pretty solid. Yeah, but uh, a year ago, this looked like mad chaos, um, but it actually doesn't look that bad anymore. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan, but, but it looks definitely better than before. So yeah, they improved that as well. But not every improvement uh, that we think is an improvement is a step forward. You can either be better, yeah, then you write success, you might be pretty much the same, then it's unclear if the hypothesis is validated or not, or the hypothesis is invalidated and you failed, which is just as fine as a success. Of course, we prefer to have more successes overall. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. Um, here is yeah the thing that you can now use if you go to piratesguilds.com slash AB testing. And, and just grab this board for you. Yeah, copy, press here on the title and, and duplicate it and send us some feedback on how to improve this board even more. And feel free to redesign it into your colors with your logo. I just want you to actually get going into this A-B testing mindset. Don't be too perfectionist about it. Follow your instinct, but check with data. This was a lovely evening. Thank you very much. And have a nice evening. Bye-bye.